Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. Today, what we're going to be talking about is valence electrons. First, we're going to talk about what they are and why they're important, and then we're going to learn how to count valence electrons, which is a really important skill as you go towards drawing Lewis structures. So first, what are valence electrons? Well, valence electrons are just the outermost electrons. So here I have a representation of aluminum. And aluminum has all these electrons around it, which are shown as those black circles. All of these electrons are what we call core electrons. Meanwhile, those outermost electrons, this one, this one, and this one, are all called valence electrons. So it just means on the outside, right? And those are really important. Now, we see very easily which electrons are core and valence in an electron configuration. So an electron configuration shows where all of our electrons are. And in an electron configuration, the electrons with the highest little number there are valence electrons. So in sodium, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s1. Remember that that number that comes up front, that's called the principal quantum number, and we're looking at the highest number there to find our valence electrons. And so our highest number there is 3. And so that's what makes this my shell with valence electrons in it. Further, remember that the superscript, the number that goes up top, is the number of electrons. So that means for sodium, it actually has one valence electron, because its superscript on that 3s is 1. So one way we can look at how many valence electrons there are is to write the electron configuration. That turns out to be the slow way, and we'll talk about a faster way in a minute. So why do valence electrons matter? Well, they really matter because the outermost electrons are what determines bonding and reactivity. So if you're going to run into any electrons around an atom, they're going to be the outside ones. And so those are the ones that tend to interact to form bonds uh, or to react with anything. And so here you can see that I have carbon, hydrogen, and there's four hydrogens around it. And the electrons forming their bonds are shown in red and blue there. Those are the valence electrons of hydrogen and the valence electrons of carbon coming together to form a bond. So the valence electrons are the most important electrons for determining the reactivity and properties of a atom or molecule. Okay, so now, given that we know why they're important and what they are, how do you count them? Well, first, the long way is you could write out the electron configuration. So for gallium, which is right here, we would write out 1s2, remember we're going along the top of our periodic table from left to right, and first we go through the 1s2 and then the 2s2. If you're not familiar with how to do this, check out my video called the periodic table trick for electron configurations. And then we go through the p block. So one thing to remember, and it's important in just a second, is that all of this periodic table is divided into different blocks. So here we have our s block, and here we have our p block. And then down here in between, we have what's called our D block. And so as we pass through boxes of those different parts of the blocks, we add electrons to different parts of our electron configuration. So we go through one, two, three, four, five, six boxes, and that gives us 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. The reason it's 2 is because this is on the second row. All right, then we go down through sodium and magnesium, and that gives us 3s2. Then we go through aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. And that is another six blocks that goes in our P block. Then we go through 4S2, the fourth row, and the S block. Now we finally get into the D. Something that's actually really important for valence electrons here is that, remember, the D block starts with 3. So that actually is a 3D10. I'm going to put that in a different color. And then lastly, we finally get to gallium, which is in 4p1. Okay, here's the thing. When I count the valence electrons, remember that what I count is I look at the highest n, the highest principal quantum number. So the highest number here is 4. I see 1, 2, 3, and 4 as those big numbers up front. So that means this guy and this guy count towards my valence electrons. But D, the D block, even though it's between them, doesn't count because it starts with a 3. And that means we have 3 valence electrons for gallium. Okay, well, that's the long way. How do I do it the short way? This is way better. 
and really tightly tied to the electron configurations, and that's why we go through that first. So let's do it the short way. All we do is we count the boxes from the left side of the periodic table, and we skip the D block. So we're trying to get to gallium, and we count one, two, three. So there's three valence electrons. That was way easier. Now, I skipped this whole D block precisely because it has that lower number in front of it. It's three. Those are actually core electrons. Okay, so that's how we count it quickly. Let's do a bunch of examples. All right, carbon. So carbon is right here, and so I have one, two, three, four. So four valence electrons. Four outermost electrons that are going to be able to go and bond. Remember, that's what we saw when we looked at hydrogen bonded with carbon. Okay, now let's look at silicon after we erase these guys. Silicon's right here, and we got one, two, three, four. So what do you know? Silicon actually has the same number of electrons as carbon. And that's actually always going to be true based on the column you're in in the periodic table. So because this column is always four blocks over, it always has four valence electrons. And so that's a nice thing to remember. This one, because it's five blocks over, always has five, and so forth. So selenium is right here, and we count one, two, three, four, five, six. Notice we again skipped that D block in the middle. So selenium has six. And now we get to sulfur. Notice where sulfur's at. Sulfur's right here. It's in the same column as selenium. So what do we expect it to have? Well, also six. And let's check that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it, it does have six. So those columns are very helpful. They can actually have you really quickly predict the number of valence electrons. Okay, let's do bromine. Bromine is right here. What do you think it's going to be? You might notice a pattern. Four, five, six, and we go one more block. Should be seven. So here we go. One, two, skip the block. Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven valence electrons. Okay, now... Helium breaks the rule of these columns that I've been talking about, and that's why we're doing it. When I count the blocks that helium is, helium's right over here in the top right, I go one, two. So even though you might have predicted everything in that column would have had eight, helium has two electrons. Okay, so that's how you count valence electrons. Like I said, a critical first step in drawing Lewis structures. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Let me know down below if you have any questions.